Hello music listeners, underground enthusiasts, and sound map users. I downloaded sound map at the recommendation of a friend, and at first I kind of uh, lumped it in with like Pokemon Go, something that I would probably obsess over and play a lot for a week or two, but in the end kind of tossed it to the side once my curiosity was appeased. But nah man, I'm in this shit and I, I, I can't get out. I'm, I've, I'm fully committed uh, to the sound map era of my life. If you have any coins, please send them my way. I guess we're doing the weekly songs list at night tonight. You know, I, I feel like despite the quality of my videos increasing, I kind of lack a general aesthetic and style to the channel that I think could be recognized as my own. So I'm kind of workshopping here. You know, what if it's the weekly songs video, but there's uh, RGB strip lights. No one's ever done that before. Anyways, um, let's talk about uh, five songs that I've handpicked just for you. Our first song this week is from Adjacent, being a farewell from Athens. Adjacent continues to prove that his different talents are in perfect sync for the most part, with both the vocal work and the production on this song being forward-thinking and very unique. The beat is brooding and has a dark, foreboding drone that absolutely haunts the production. The rumbling 808 creeps under this track while foggy bit crush melody pierce and saturate every single inch of the stereo space. And Adjacent's vocals in the beginning here are his usual dreary monotone cadence in this drunken kind of bouncy flow that is beyond infectious, it's so fun to listen to, but it does quickly move into this sort of strained over the top delivery. He sounds borderline belligerent on some of these lines and kind of frantic with his flows spilling over the beat with a mix that is uncharacteristically dry as well. I think it is a really awesome choice, it's full of personality and a lot of fun, I'm glad that that even in his expertly refined sound and aesthetic, Adjacent continues to experiment and try new things and push new boundaries. The track wraps up with the really cool beat switch uh, that kind of gives a new energy to the same sound. It's fucking sick. Honestly, one of my favorite tracks from him recently would like to see his continued experimentation. We got a new Evan Carr track, which is Us in Context, and this is the second Evan Carr track of 2024 this year that acts as a complimentary follow-up to his last track, the first track of the year, being Drag Me Home, which was a thrashy pop punk track uh, with one of my favorite choruses of the year. Us in Context elects to branch off of that sound, reining in tumbling drum fills and chugging guitar riffs with a clean and tightly squeezed mix, which is not surprising at all considering Evan's history of very clean, pristine vocals and production and engineering and everything. It feels grandiose and powerful, but with a calculated limit to the edge that it provides, which ends up being a pretty advantageous decision for Evan. Because his impassioned, half-shouted vocals on this sound pretty incredible, especially with the polish and shine uh, that he's got on it that doesn't obscure the emotion and the organic timbre of his voice. You kind of get the best of both worlds here. Because Evan does kind of play it on the edge here a little bit. Maybe over-squeezing, over-polishing the vocals and the guitar and the drums can kind of lead to maybe a little bit of a muffling and compression of energy, but no, Evan rides the wave beautifully. And the writing also adheres to the sensibilities of the sound here. It's emotionally intelligent and poignant. Uh, it's a really great song to sort of pick apart on subsequent listens. Overall, this is a pretty killer outing from Evan. I'm stoked that it is out, and if the lengthy time between songs is imperative to produce these kinds of results, I am more than okay with waiting. And then we have you from Gianni. Gianni, formerly known as Shinigami, has made the decision to branch off from Shinigami and create music under a new moniker, presumably a new primary moniker or only moniker, though I kind of doubt that the Shinigami name will never see new music again. It's just not prioritized right now. Not to use his decision as a soapbox for my own personal opinions, but I'm going to do just that. I respect this decision a lot, and I think that it stands as a testament to how the dynamic of an underground scene can differ uh, from a mainstream, more constricted, label-dominated space. The Shinigami name is established, but in under 10 years, Gianni has reached the conclusion that it no longer serves as the proper vessel for his art and creative vision, and due to his flexibility as an independent artist, the decision to start anew with a new name really isn't that unrealistic or unobtainable of a goal. I believe that you should always prioritize your creative vision, and so if this choice serves his, then I fully support it. Gianni has always been uncommon compromising in his art, making raging dubstep tracks, hardcore hip-hop, electronic video game soundtracks, whichever, you know, goal he sets, he meets with unprecedented freedom and creativity, regardless of critical reception. And you, the song that he has decided to debut this Gianni project with, this new name with, is a cool introduction to the new name and an impressive precedent being set here. Mixing glitchy electronic and bubbly plug, you as a syrupy, sweet display of ballady vocals and vivid imagery mixed with really innovative, unique, electronic, buzzing production. Is it a complete tone? departure from the previous songs that I have heard from him under the Shinigami name, uh, no, but I also wouldn't expect it to be. 
What it is, is a groovy, catchy, electronic banger packed with saturation and creativity. I'm pretty excited to see where this new start takes him. Our next track comes in the form of Snips T with Sunny Trippin', and I love the textures that this song produces pretty much on all fronts. The production from Ayashi has the stuttered, stumbling drums that sound so crisp and dusty on the track. I feel like the dynamics of each hit are presented with such clarity. It feels so clear. And the muffled vocal chops and obscured melodies only reinforce this sort of classic lo-fi hip hop sound it scratches the brain perfectly crisp and snappy and Snipsy's vocals create a great contrast to the production here crooning warm soft smooth vocal melodies that provide a softness opposite to how dry the drums are the writing is concise and repetitive hammering in and putting emphasis on the hook enough times to guarantee that you will be singing along with it by the end of the track and it is a compelling vocal performance it's warm and smooth but I, I appreciate that it maintains a dryness to the mix so that the organic tones break through I always appreciate it when people tactfully undermix their vocals. One of those songs that kind of sounds nostalgic even though you've never heard it, if that makes any sense at all to anybody, it's a killer. I love it. And to end off this short list, we have Sundry Labs with Hidden Experiment 2204. Sundry Labs, the side project of Sundry Twin Tails, a producer excelling in cute future bass, house, and shifting tracks, has more or less been radio silent in the past year. Not that I really expect frequent activity from a side accountant for b-sides and experiments, but whatever. In terms of main releases, there was Twin Tone on the Sunday Ray Twin Tails account half a year ago, which was a bubbly bossa nova infused new jazz tape full of ringtone inspired tracks that are way too fun for their own good. Uh, I love that project. But not a lot of Sundaray Lab stuff until now. A couple tracks archived from the past years of Sundaray Labs were released, and one from 2016 in particular caught my attention. Experiment 2204 is a buzzing, bouncy house track with such an infectious groove and very stylish aesthetic. The crushed staccato key melodies that cut across these heavy kicks and crisp claps and hats have such a clean swing to them, it is impossible not to move your body along with the flow of the track. And this progression of slowly adding additional elements and instruments and melodies until it becomes this neatly packed swirl of organized melodies and bubbly synths and percussive hits is the gift that keeps on giving. I'm a huge fan of a lot of Sundaray Twin Tail stuff, and even with the experiments page, you really find some fantastic, incredibly well-produced tracks. I'm super glad that this one saw the light of day. And that is going to do it for this week. If you listen to these songs, please comment and tell me how you feel about them. If you have not listened to these songs, go listen to them, come back, comment and tell me how you feel about them. I value your opinion. I released a song like three weeks ago and I keep forgetting to promote my own song on the video that I do once a week where I talk about songs that came out, but I released Barcade Blues with Garden and Swain. Uh, it's a track that is a lot of fun and I'm super proud of it and I tried new things and I think they paid off pretty well and Garden and Swain both were incredibly complimentary to the track and I cannot thank them enough for their contributions. They fucking killed it. No promises because I'm habitually flaky, but I do hope to have some sort of minor overhaul to the channel in terms of presentation and aesthetic. I care a lot about what I'm doing here and I think that the effort that I'm putting in isn't enough. I need to have intention behind presentation. The words that I am speaking from my mouth do not matter if they're not presented in a way that is fun and entertaining and even visually uh, appealing as well. This is, this is YouTube after all. This isn't a radio show. Thank you all for sticking around. Uh, I got some video essays coming out soon that I think are uh, on rather compelling and nuanced topics that I hope to tackle with the tact that I believe that I can. Catch me in the next video where I strap you to a chair and forcefully make you listen to music that is not Japanese jazz fusion released between the years of 1975 and 1989, you fucking freak. Bye.